Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today IGCSE. This is the second part for the Paper 4 Theory from May-June 2024 examinations. Question 7, Part A. Figure 7.1 shows three bars of steel A, B, and C. A student is given the three pieces of steel. Two of the pieces are magnetized and one piece is unmagnetized. Describe and explain how the student determines which piece is unmagnetized using only the three pieces of steel. Alright, let's assume that the first two bars of the steel are magnetized, meaning that they have north and south pole. However, the third bar of steel is unmagnetized. So what we're going to do is take one of the bar of the magnet and place it next to the other bar and check to see if it attracts each other. Now reverse the bar magnet and see what happens. If it repels, this tells us that it is magnetized. Now we're going to repeat the same thing for the other bar of steel. Place it next to each other and we'll observe what happened. We'll reverse the pole and see what happens again. If it attracts even though we have reversed the bar magnet, which tells us that it does not have any north or south pole. Next question B. Figure 7.2 shows a circuit diagram of a step-down transformer. Now, the role of a transformer is to change the size of the alternating voltage. For instance, the voltage in is at the primary coil and the voltage out is at the secondary coil. If you have more number of turns in your primary coil and smaller number of turns in your secondary coil, it is called a step-down transformer, whereby you are reducing the size of the output voltage. Question part 1. The mains voltage supplied to the transformer is 240 voltage. So supplied here being the primary voltage or the voltage input. The output power of the transformer is 45 watts. The transformer is 100% efficient. 100% efficiency means that the power in is equal to the power out. Calculate the input current to the transformer. So we are looking to find the current at the primary coil. The formula related to this would be input power equal to output power whereby the voltage and current of the primary coil is equal to the voltage and current of the secondary coil. We already know that the power out is 45 voltage. So we're just going to write 45 watts. Sorry, not voltage. The voltage in this primary coil is 240 and we're looking to find the current. So the current that we will obtain is 0 0.19 amperes. Next question part 2. Draw a labeled diagram of a step-down transformer. On the label, state a suitable material for each of the components. So a step-down transformer means that you will have a more number of coil at the primary and lesser number of coil in the secondary. And this is how it should look like. However, we will not get a complete 3 marks if we do like this because you are asked to also label the diagram. The material used would be soft iron core. The coils would be made of copper. And lastly, don't forget to label the primary coil and the secondary coil. Next, question 8, part A. Figure 8.1 shows a circuit. The circuit is designed to switch on a night light when the surroundings are dark. Alright, so let's first identify all the components that you can see in your circuit. We have here a power supply, a fixed resistor, a light depending resistor, and a light emitting diode. Remember that a light dependent resistor changes its resistance depending on the surrounding light. If there is more light, its resistance will be low. If there is less light, its resistance will be high. However, a light emitting diode is going to produce light. LDR receive light and LED produce light. So it's not the same thing and make sure you know the differences. Question part 1. On figure 8.1, draw the circuit symbol for a voltmeter used to measure the potential difference across the light-dependent resistor. So this here is your light-dependent resistor. A voltmeter has to be placed opposite of your component. So you can place it like this or even opposite on the other side like this. It doesn't matter as long as it is on the opposite side and not along the lines of the circuit. Next question part 2. The surroundings changes from light to dark. State the effect of this change on the resistance of the LDR. When there is low light which is dark, the resistance increases. Next part 2. State and explain the effect of this change on the potential difference across the light emitting diode LED. 
So we need to find out what happens to the potential difference across the diode. So if the voltage travel in this direction, when it reaches this junction, the voltage will remain constant. However, when the light decreases, the resistance of this has increased. So let's say initially it was 10 ohm, now it increases to become 20 ohm. We will notice that the overall resistance of the circuit has increased. So if the resistance increases, the potential difference will also increase. Next question part B. Figure 8.2 shows another circuit. Lamps A and lamps B are identical filament lamps. If they mention to you that it's identical, remember that they are trying to tell you the resistance are the same. The current supplied by the power supply is 0.5 amperes. Calculate the resistance of lamp A. So we are looking to find the value of R for lamp A. We are given with the voltage and we are given with the current, which means that we can apply Ohm's law whereby voltage equals to current times resistance. If we rearrange this equation, we will get resistance equal to voltage over current. So let's find out what is the voltage received for lamp A and what is the current that goes through lamp A so that we can get the resistance across lamp A. The rule for a parallel circuit is that the voltage is equal everywhere. So lamp A is going to receive 240 voltage. Now let's look at the current. The current travels, it receives 0.5 amperes and when it reaches this junction, again we've got a parallel circuit. However, the rule of current in a parallel circuit is that it will split. Since it is an identical filament lamp, it will split equally. So 0.25 and 0.25 and then join back together and it becomes 0.5. So the current received for lamp A is 0.25 ampere. So just put this value in your calculator and you will get 960. Do not forget your units ohm. Next, question 9 part A. Radioactive isotopes emit ionizing radiation and are used in hospitals. State and explain two safety precautions necessary for the use of these isotopes in medical procedures. Radioactive isotopes are dangerous and harmful to us, so we have to take safety measures when handling them. For instance, we should not be exposed to radioactive isotopes at a long time. So what we can do is reduce the exposure time or stand far away from the source of radioactive isotope because this can help us to lower the amount of radiation that is being absorbed into our body. Next, you can use protection like shield across your body so that the radioactive isotope cannot penetrate into our body, keeping us safe. Next, part 2. Give two reasons why alpha emitters are not used as radioactive tracers inside the body. Even though radioactive isotopes are harmful, sometimes they can help us in medical. Like for instance, they can use tracers that are ingested into the body that will then travel along your body to help us find problems inside of the body. Now, the reason why we can't use an alpha emitter is because the penetration power of alpha emitter is very low. It can be easily stopped by just a piece of paper. So if we inhale it into our body, there is no way for us to trace it as it cannot penetrate out of our body. And another reason is because alpha emitters has the highest ionization power. So it's not safe for us to send this into our body. Next question B. Sodium-24 is an isotope of sodium that has a proton number of 11 and a nucleon number of 24. So we will write the nucleon number at the top and proton number at the bottom. Sodium-24 decays by emission of a beta particle to form an isotope of magnesium. Use nuclide notation to write down the nuclide equation for this decay. So we must remember the nuclide notation of beta particle which is 0 and negative 1. If it was an alpha particle, it will be 4, 2. Alpha particle is the same as helium particle. Beta is 0, negative 1 and gamma will be 0. So make sure you remember this. Okay, it decays, we'll put an arrow, by emission. So it is emitting a beta particle and it forms a magnesium. From sodium, it becomes magnesium. However, we are not done here because we still have to fill up the nuclide notation for magnesium. So the nucleon number here have to add up to become 24. If it's 0 over here, then it will be 24 up here because 24 plus 0 is 24. Next, we need to find a number bottom here that adds up to become 11. 12 add with negative 1 becomes 11. So the nucleon notation for magnesium is 24 and 11. 
Next question 10. The solar system includes the sun and the planets. State two other types of natural object that orbits the sun. So I'm going to write asteroids and comets. Next, state the shape of the orbits of the planet. The shape of the orbit is not entirely a circle, however, it is more elliptical. Make sure you remember this term as it is quite a famous question in chapter 6. Question part C. Figure 10.1 shows the orbit of an object around the sun. At point A, the object is closest to the sun. If it is closest to the sun, this means that the gravitational potential energy is at the lowest point. And at point B, the object is furthest away from the sun. If it is furthest away from the sun, it means that the gravitational potential energy is at its highest. State and explain the energy transfer as the object travels from point A to point B. So as it goes from A to B, we have to discuss how the energy is transferred. So as you can see, the energy is transferred into gravitational potential energy because from low gravitational potential energy, it has increased. However, this is not the only type of energy that we are going to be talking about. If the gravitational potential energy increases, the kinetic energy will decrease. And as it moves back to A, the kinetic energy will increase. I have explained this in more details in one of my video of space physics. You can watch that to understand better on more in depth. So the reason for this is because the energy is being conserved. Remember that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred from one form to the other. So that is what is happening over here. Next question part D. Jupiter is 7.8 times 10 to the power of 11 meters from the sun. The speed of the light in vacuum is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Calculate the time taken for light to reach Jupiter. Now we have got distance, speed, and we're looking to find time. The formula related to these three quantities is speed equals to distance over time. So if we rearrange this formula to find time, it will be distance over speed. As you can see here, the units are both in meters, so there is no need to change. Just put this in your calculator and we can get 2.6 times 10 to the power of 3. And the unit would be seconds. The last question, 11. Name the galaxy that contains the sun. So that would be our galaxy. And the name of our galaxy is Milky Way. Question B. Light observed from distant galaxies is red shifted. State the theory of the universe that this observation supports. So it will be Big Bang Theory. There are two evidence for Big Bang Theory. One is the red shift and the other is cosmic microwave background radiation. Next, question C. Cosmic microwave background radiation is observed at all points in space. State when this radiation was produced. So this radiation was produced immediately after the incident of Big Bang. So we can just say that it happened shortly when the universe was formed. Next part 2. Explain why this radiation is now in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so right now we are in this spectrum, which is microwave. So the radiation started when the wavelengths were closer to each other and as the universe expanded, the radiation or the wavelength has redshifted. So we can say due to the universe expanding and the radiation has now redshifted to the microwave region. Alright guys, that's all for this video. For the next video, I'll be discussing on mathematics paper 4.2 from May June 2024. Thank you so much for watching and if you find this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Take care.